In this lesson, we're going to detail and clone our arcade cabinet. All right, so in the last lesson, we had learned how to build out geometry using a line and then using the extrude modifier. Now, you'll notice that the arcade cabinet is very angular, so we've got these nice sharp corners. There's nothing in the real world that actually has sharp corners like that, um, unless they're specifically made that way, but it doesn't really look natural. So what I want to do is I want to round off these corners. To do this, I can do it a couple of different ways. The way that I'm going to show you is by using your modifier stack. So under your modify tab, you'll notice that we have the extrude modifier. The extrude modifier is on top, meaning that is showing us the end result of what we've done to this object. So this is why we have our geometry. Now if I scroll, um, go to the line object, you'll see that that shows me the state at which we had created the line. Now I can still modify my object and have it modify other um, modifiers in my stack. So the extrude is dependent on the line. So whatever is at the bottom is going to control everything above it. So what I want to do is I want to go to vertex mode. Okay, so you can use your little bar right here to scroll up and down in your rollouts. Let's go to the selection rollout and go to vertex mode. And let's select these vertices and let's round those off. So one tool that I could use is called fillet. Let's scroll down and we're going to go to our, um, let's figure out which rollout this is, the geometry rollout, and we're going to go to fillet. If you left click on that, that's going to activate the tool and then all I have to do is left click on the vertex that I want to change and drag that and that will round off that corner. Let's go ahead and make it kind of a small rounded corner, just like so. Let's do the same thing here. Round that off and here. And let's go all the way around this arcade cabinet. And we're going to stop right here. We're not going to work on that one. Okay, so round that off. Let's go ahead and round this one. And then we'll leave these alone. Let's go ahead and round off this one too, just a little bit. Okay, so something like that should be fine. All right, so now that we have rounded that off, let's turn off the fillet tool and let's left click on line to turn off the vertex mode and go back to extrude. Notice that our geometry now has this smooth surface. All right, so now that we have that rounded off, let's go ahead and duplicate or clone this object. Now before I do that, I want to reset the pivot point of my object. To reset the pivot point, you'll simply go to your hierarchy panel, and then you're going to go to Effect Pivot Only, and then you're going to use this alignment section called Center to Object. Left click on that, and that's going to center that object on your, or center your pivot on your object. Let's go ahead and turn off Effect Pivot Only, and then let's go ahead and duplicate this object. We could do this a couple of different ways. The easiest and most useful way that I find is to hold down shift with your move tool activated and move the object in the direction that you want it to be cloned. Go ahead and release the shift and the left mouse button and it's going to bring up your clone options. Now the clone options are very very important because they determine what kind of object is being created. You'll notice that the object by default is going to be set to copy and what that does is it creates the clone and it's basically asking if we want the two objects to be linked. If we create a copy, these objects will be unlinked, meaning that if I change one, it's not going to affect the other. But if I want one to affect the other, I would use instance. In most cases, I will use instance until I know absolutely certain that I'm not going to be making changes to the other. So let's hit OK. Let's check out the behavior. What happens here if this is an instance? If I select the Modify tab, and let me go to Line, and actually let's go ahead and expand Line and go to Vertex Mode. This is another way of going up to your selection rollout and turning on Vertex Mode. Let's select this vertex right here, and let's move that up. Notice how it changes the other side. If this were a copy, that wouldn't change the other side. Let's hit Control-Z to undo that turn off vertex mode, let's go back to extrude. So once I have this set, let's go ahead and pull this one out just a little bit. And there we go. 
Okay, so I'm trying to get the width that I want for my arcade, arcade cabinet. So that looks pretty good. So now that that is set, you'll notice that these objects are still two different objects. I want them to become one object. To do that, I need to make w these unique, meaning that they can't be instances of one another. So to make them unique, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select one and use this icon right here called Make Unique. Doing so, you'll notice that the um, the words here, the modifiers, are no longer in bold. Um, whenever you see bold modifiers, that is an indication that they are linked to another object or they are instances of another object. Go ahead and select this one. You'll notice that that is no longer there is either. So now what I can do is if I go to vertex mode, I can select that one vertex and move it up. Notice that it's no longer changing the other. This is the exact um, result that you'll get with a copy. Let's go ahead and turn off vertex mode. Let's go back to extrude. And now I want to make them one object. To do this, what I'll do is I'll simply right click on one of them and I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. What that's going to do is it's going to collapse what you see in the modifier stack, meaning our extrude and our line has disappeared, and we are now working with an editable poly object. What this will allow me to do is to modify the geometry of the object. So notice that now I have vertex mode, edge mode, border mode, polygon mode, and element mode. This um, editable poly is probably the most commonly used object you'll use to create your 3D models. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Let's right click, convert to editable poly, and so now they're both editable poly, but they're still separate objects. So how do I get them to be one object? Well under editable poly I have a tool called attach, and what this will allow me to do is to take one or more objects, or two or more objects, and make them one. So with this object selected, activate attach, and then left click on the object that you want to attach to this object. So we'll left click on that, you'll notice that both are now highlighted. Turn off attach, and now these are both one object. Now one thing that I want to note is that these objects, even though they are one, they are still two elements. To see this, let's go up to our selection rollout and go to element mode. You'll notice that this side is still this side, okay, or is still separate from this side. So I have two elements, but they are one object. To make two elements uh, one element, you need to connect them with geometry, and that's what we're going to learn how to do in our next lesson.